okay so uh, this mock interview session i'll be asking the questions if anyone knows the answer they can just uh, unmute themselves and can give the answer and also this will help you out to if you are preparing for the interview this will help you out in your interview also and also uh, after this session uh, will be done like I, i think there are 10 to 12 question i have noted down so after this session is done i'll be explaining those uh, questions also okay so let's start with the first question then uh, my screen is visible to all or yes sir. okay uh, yes okay. Yeah, it's visible good. okay so the first question is how cpm changes password the workflow of like how cpm is changing the password can i answer it uh, uh, yeah yeah like who whoever knows the uh, answer he can just unmute and just answer yes please go ahead so yeah whenever we uh, trigger this change password function mm-hmm. so password manager user will uh, fetch the password uh, fetch the username and uh, password and it tries to log in into the uh, vault server it it, it fetches the pa- credential from vault and it's trying to uh, uh, connect to that server and uh, if if the uh, first it the, it does that verification process if verification is done then it uh, trigger the change reset option yep but the complete uh, backend like how it's second so is uh, yes go ahead okay user, okay, user click on change button mm-hmm. and then that uh, account with pre- with current password i mean with current credentials that will log in into the target server and that will check whether the password is correct or not if the pa- if the password is correct and that it will create a new password with the password complexity uh, which is set on that server mm-hmm. and then and at our platform level in our pwa and with the help of uh, plugin controller new password will be created and it will be logged out from the target server and it will again log in into the uh, target server with the new password and after that it will store that new password in our vault server yep. so uh, yes correct so the password is uh, like in the password chain there are three steps first is the verification and how the verification is done like your cpm will use the current username and password to log in to that target server so first criteria is met if it it's able to log in then which means your username and password is correct and if it's not able to log in to, to that uh, target server it will give you the error incorrect username or password second in in the second step it will generate the password as per the password complexity you have uh, in your platform and after generating the password again it will log in with the current username and the password to that target server and will try to uh, change the password as uh, because it will generate and it will uh, use that password on the target server after like it's able to change the password then uh, successfully uh, it will log out and again it will be using the new uh, new password to log in to that target server after this is done then it will come to vault and it will save the password but uh, uh, you might have seen while uh, clicking on the change option uh, you might have seen like the password complexity is uh, not meeting or the ports are not open so etc kind of thing so in the verification steps only you will get those uh, like your ports are not open or like the cpm service is not running or like many different types of error you can face so always uh, because this is important may in uh, i believe many of the interview they ask this question workflow of cpm uh, change or verify or reconcile so verify is like the same thing uh, in the verification also if you will click on the verify task what it will do it will use the current username and password to log into that target server if it's able to log in which means like the password uh, stored in the cyberac vault is correct and username and password is correct that's your verification and in the reconcile option it's little different 
in the reconcile option you have a reconcile account it will use that reconcile account to log into that target server and rest is same just like your change in the change uh, me, I, think, uh, me, I think on the simple change change password so i think that password manager will be logging on the target device through logon logon account when you uh, you haven't specified that logon account then how it will log into that logon account yes, yes. firstly we have to verify so logon account is not yes. mandatory logon account is a concept of where you require additional permission uh, to log into that server maybe like specifically for your root account because root account is not permitted to log in to uh, directly to the unix box in that scenario we associate a logon account so the logon account concept will come when you have specified that logon account otherwise if you haven't specified then how cpm will use that logon concept so there is so there is any, uh, any other policy by which the password manager will be logging on the target device from back end policy it, how... like, let's suppose you have onboarded a, a test a account in cyber app with the password okay. when you will click on the change option it will use that test a account only to log into that target server okay. same account it will use not the logon account because logon account is a different concept you need to specify the logon account then only it will use the logon account okay, okay. yep uh, neer i have a question yes. so a uh, reconciliation process or change process is automatic or is it done manually you can have the automatic also or manual also it depends upon you there is a parameter in your platform if you will select your perform periodic change equal to yes then your this uh, see, uh, change will be your automatic like you uh, in the master policy you have defined 90 days so what it will happen your cpm will be changing the password automatically if that perform periodic change is equal to yes and if that is equal to no then uh, cpm will not change the password automatically you need to click on the change option to rotate the password okay so if, okay, so if i'm asked that if reconciliation process is automatic or manual then uh, i need to reply yeah. this in the for the reconcile there is an option in the platform uh, when unsync uh, reconcile there is uh, some parameter when unsync reconcile the password unsync means when uh, let's suppose uh, after 7 days your password verification is done but that password verification is failing due to incorrect username and password which means out of sync the password is not synced password is different on the target server server and the vault so in that case if you have set that parameter when uh, password unsynced reconcile so it will automatically reconcile the account so we will check all these in the compliance report you can check in the uh, you can edit the platform there you will find the uh, this under the uh, automatic password change just one minute guys okay um like how will we get to know uh, which all accounts that need to be reconciled or the password needs to be changed on those accounts so it depends upon we the need... password policy how you have set your master password policy like after how many days password is getting changed and all uh, just uh, just give me guys one minute just one minute actually just
Uh, yes, guys, I am back. Uh, yes, uh, you were asking some question or? Uh, yes, Nee. So uh, I was asking, how will we exactly get to know that uh, some accounts need to be reconciled or the password needs to be changed? Where will we be able to see them? As I said, this is done uh, when we just deploy the CyberArk. Every the master po uh, policy, everything is configured automatically and manual. Okay. Yeah, in the platform itself, if you have, because there will be an exception and after how many days password will be changed and the reconcile option, everything is defined in, in the platform and it, it will be different for every team because some uh, your Windows or Unix team, if they want, like they don't want to uh, rotate the password automatically and or they don't want to reconcile the password automatically. So if we get uh, accounts uh, in compliance report that the password change and verification failed, so do we do them man manually? Yes, you need, you can use the password upload utility. So like we uh, suppose there are hundred accounts and hundred accounts are having issues. So you can use the password upload utility and you can push the, uh, like after fixing the backend issue for hundred uh, accounts, you can push the change or verify or reconcile in, in one book so that the accounts will be reconciled or change. And guys, uh, after this session, you ask your doubt because I am asking the, uh, this is mock session. Okay. Okay, okay, next question is, if you are connected to a Windows server using PSM, so your live session is going on, you are, you are connected to a target server. So an auditor wants to monitor that live session. So how, how it is done and the workflow of that. Hello. So from PBWA only, he can, he can monitor the live from session from monitoring tab. Okay. And uh, the workflow, how it will monitor that live session? Because already your live session is going on. It has been established from the uh, PSM server to target machine. Actually, in monitoring tab, there is an option called live sessions. Uh, and he will open that and he will select that uh, privileged account session. Then because uh, you, you know one thing. So when your live session is going on, that recording is getting stored on the PSM server only, temporarily basis. Yes, sir. after that so morning, after you, you disconnect the session, it will upload it to the vault. But how that is recording is there on your PSM server. So how that live session monitoring is showing you the uh, like when you click on that monitor option, it will show you that active session going on. So how it is uh, showing you how it show with the help of PSM admin. Command. Yep. So this is the, uh, when you are want to see the live session monitoring. So PSM admin connect will log into the PSM locally. And it will just uh, like, it will be used to show that live uh, session. So that's the working of the admin connect. PSM admin connect user. Okay, and the uh, it's done in the same way. You need to go to the uh, monitoring tab, and there you can see the recordings, uh, all recording also, and the live session also. Okay, next question is if PWA URL, like you have a web address and SSL certificate is there. So if that is expired, how you can update that certificate? Uh, hi, Neen. I want to answer this question. Uh, yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, when the certificate is expired, mm. I think we need to create a CSR, like certificate mm. signing request, in order to generate a new SSL certificate. Mm -hmm. And then we can, once we get the certificate from the mm. Windows team or some, uh, some different team, uh, we, we generally you know, uh, import those certificate at our personal store. 
and then we'll do uh, in this iia settings uh, we'll go for bindings and from there we will uh, you know we'll choose uh, that ssl certificate from the personal store and we can apply those settings with uh, iis reset yes correct so yes. yeah so this is done in the same way but there are two ways to uh, update you the certificate first is like as uh, neha told the same thing you need to create a certificates uh, shine, uh, signing request and you need to provide the uh, your common name of the certificate your dns state locality every info in, info and you need to share that csr with the respective team they will just uh, provide you the certificate and that certificate you can uh, need to import on your pws server and then you need to just go to the bindings and assign that certificate to the bindings and just do a isc set another way is uh, if your certificate uh, like in um, if your certification authority is like enabled for the automatic renew so what you need to do you just need to go to the manage local uh, certificate on your pws server and there will be the certificate option right click and request a new certificate and it will ask you for the template so template for your pwa certificate will be gen, uh, it will be always web server so because your iis is a web server only so you need to select that web server and automatically a new certificate will be applied and then uh, you need to go to your iis setting and just uh, do the same uh, assign the new certificate in the bindings and just do a iis reset and your new certificate will be applied to your pwa web address okay moving to next uh, sir one small question uh, yes sir how we know that certificate was expired sir so have you uh, have you typed just uh, ever like www.google.com or something let me show you the uh, itself here you will see the certificate and it will show you the date also like when it's going to expire yeah. yeah this is the one that i was expire on this one this will expire okay okay yeah. got it so this is a part of your health check okay so let me just okay okay we were on uh, okay ssl certificate next question is how to increase the password retrieval time uh, in cyberarc when you you have a show option when you click on the show option your password is uh, like displayed and that is displayed for certain time and after that time is met again it will be in the star 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 you cannot see in a plain text so from where you can just increase that time In PBW, yeah, in administration tab, in configuration options, there is a general tab on that option. I think we can increase the retrieval time of that password. Yep, there is an option. It's default ten second. Yes. It's default ten second, and you can increase uh, from there. There is an option password retrieval time uh, under your administration tab and option, and when you will go to the general. there you will see this option okay moving to next okay uh, if you want to run full replication on the dr vault your disaster recovery vault how you can run that full replication yeah we can uh... do it by in pdr.ini file we have a uh, last two uh, lines like, like next binary something i don't remember right now but we can delete those lines and we can uh, restart that vault disaster recovery service to do the full replication yep correct and where we, we will see that uh, full replication is happening in, we can see that in pdr log yes correct Okay, moving to next question. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज डी आर सर्विस इज इंस्टॉल ऑन दी बोथ प्रोडक्शन एंड दी डी आर वॉल्ट एंड लेट सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू यूज अ डिफरेंट डी आर यूजर टू रेप्लीकेट लेट सपोज वेन यूर प्रोडक्शन इज अप सो दे इज अ डिफरेंट डी आर यूजर विच इज रेप्लीकेटिंग दी डेटा फ्रॉम प्रोडक्शन टू दी डी आर वॉल्ट बट वेन यूर डी आर इज एक्टिंग एज अ प्रोडक्शन एंड योर प्रोडक्शन इज एक्टिंग एज अ डी आर सो इन दैट केस If I want to replicate the data, I, I want to use a different DR user. So, how we can do that, or is it possible or not? I think DR fallback is uh, fallback user is uh, doing that task. But still, it it's using some uh, user to authenticate. like it's how the how, fail back okay. how you are replicating like let's suppose your uh, production a a a server is your production and b server is your dr vault so uh, we have done a dr drill and now b server has become active has become production now and a server uh, has become dr now vice versa now i want to replicate the data because now new data is there on your dr which is acting as a production and how i will replicate the data from your uh, dr which is acting as a production to the a server and i want to use a different user like different user for replicating from production to dr dr to production Yeah, it can be possible. Me. Okay. So, so yeah. when we are uh, installing the uh, DR services on the production, mm -hmm. okay, main production. So on that time, we have to create one DR user, okay, and give the all permission to that user. So in this situation, this user will be uh, get the data from the DR to production. Yep, correct. So uh, and one thing adding to it, you should have the license for that, because by default, your DR, it uh, your CyberArk just provide. one only default license that is one dr you need to have a different license to create a new dr user if you will see if you will go to the private arc client and if you will add it if you will click on the dr or any of the user go to update they are having epv type user type or pwa type or dr user type so every user will be having some different types user user type will be different so to create a new dr user you need a license right yep. so we are doing, so we are doing in production world only we can create dr user yep okay sir. you can create two uh, your dr because one is already created by default and you can create one more okay we are doing in primary world only that's all Uh, is there any specific reason that we need a different dr user to do that application uh yes because let like sometimes what happen when you are uh, replicating the data your passwords are not getting replicated so if you want to use the same user while replicating from dr to production you will see like your uh, dr user gets suspended due to uh, like a wrong password so for that you need to uh, run that cred file and update again to private our client and activate the user but if you are having different different user you will not have that issue okay yep. and also the your data is all say same on both the servers it's not like that you are creating the user there it will not replicate let's suppose you have created something on the production automatically if you are running the dr uh, that uh, all the configuration a user will be there on your dr also okay moving to next question okay if your vault hard hardening fails when uh, let's suppose you are installing the vault server and your hardening is failing there is an option to uh, like hardening is failing you are you have retried a lot but still it's uh, failing so how you can just uh, do the manual hardening sorry so i think 
So I think we go to the uh, firewall, inbound firewall, and block the all external communication through the firewalls and delete the all. So as you know, when let, let's suppose yeah, one of the uh, this like your vault will uh, remove unused ports from the the firewall, but it ha it it uh, it uh, in the part of your hardening process. it will just disable some of the services also some changes made on your windows registry also so how you will be how you will come to know yeah these are the services we need to disable or and if you will miss it 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 will be like the uh, security concern and every company have the, have their audits Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I think if you go to the Ethernet and open the properties and delete all the extra uh, remaining the IP version four or IP version six, so we and delete all the entries over there. Yep. And also delete the uh, inbound fire inbound firewall. Okay, communication to the external device. Yep. So we can. Okay, we did that. so uh, what about what about the services which are what services we need to disable or remove men window window operator services i think yes there are windows modular servers uh, your update your installer service but again yes. the manual uh, if you can do it manually also but again the uh, your vault hardening is done at the os level also so if you will miss it then again it's a security concern so if you are uh, when you are installing the vault and your hardening is failing so there is a command to run the hardening again command is ca vault harden dot exe and you need to you need to uh, provide the path Uh, you need to provide the path and uh, let's suppose if you are having ha vault for ha vault the command is different for your uh, what we say the uh, stand alone vault the command is different stand yeah stand alone vault the command is different the command if you will go to the installation directory of the cyber arc there is a server folder if you have seen that so inside that you will like you have seen ca vault manager.exe there is one more ca vault Harden dot exe. So you need to use that command. Open your command prompt. Run that ca vault harden dot exe, and you need to provide your uh, whether it's a standalone vault or the ha vault. If it's a standalone vault, provide uh, write down. Uh, it will be one word, no space. Uh, if you want to write standalone vault, and then your log directory path. log directory path means you can see after hardening uh, whether it was done correctly or not a log file will be created so that's how your hardening can be done if it's failing from the wizard so so, so we can do it from the script we can run this script again yeah, yes as i said you need to run that command yes yes, yes. that command you can run it again and you can just harden Yeah. Okay, moving to next question. How to set up an automatic and manual password policy? I believe I already answered this. Uh, yes, please. Yes, yes, already covered. Yep. So I I believe many uh, like few of you are uh, I think freshers want to switch to Cybera. Uh, let's discuss this also. If anyone knows, please uh, go ahead. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Yes, sir. Hello. Ah, uh, yes, please go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Ah. Uh, Anyone? Anybody not? Can hear anyone me. can answer. Uh, please go ahead. Mm. 
we can change the master policy settings okay or then we can keep the uh, but which parameter will be uh, used for the automated change password so uh, through so option can... just go to the administrator uh, tab and go to option and just go to the automatic password change and there you will uh, see the lots of settings so according to that you... yeah not on the administration tab option it will uh, under administration tab you have platform management yes yes, yes. so the automatic and manual pa pa password policy means automatic means your cyber arc cpm will be changing the password of the account automatically you will be having some password policy let's suppose you have 90 days password policy uh when your password is going to expire cpm will be changing the password before the expiration in the platform you have heads interval by default which is 5 days so let's suppose you have defined the password policy 90 days and your perform periodic change is equal to yes in the platform so cpm what cpm will do it will change the password on 85th day 5 days before uh, your password expiration and if you have said that uh, perform periodic change equal to no which means your manual password policy your cpm will not be changing the password automatically you need to uh, log in to cyberarc pwa and click on change or reconcile to change the password that's your manual password policy we say right yep. okay i think many are joining okay let's let's move to next question then how to configure ldps integration so here we required four things over there okay so firstly ssl certificate you ldps okay go ahead one bind user and four group so from ad team we will re uh, receive this uh, four detail mm -hmm. so after that just go to the uh, administrator configuration tab there's a uh, lab integration and this uh, we will ask you the uh, your ldps a uh, connection and your domain and we will ask your uh, group group mapping and after that we will uh, query something like if adding adding to this we need to add uh, active directory ip address under uh, like domain name to the host file in the vault yes, yes. correct exactly that's yeah, very important that's the main thing because your vault is a part of the work group it will not be able and that is how vault and active directory will communicate yes. it will because for your ldps uh, when uh, you are doing the ldps integration from pwa instead of your uh, domain name if you will provide the ip address it will not be a ssl for the ssl you need to provide the your domain name only like let's suppose you have google google.com so and in your vault in the host entries of the on the vault server you need to provide the fqdn full computer name fully qualified displayed name on in the host file of the your vault server with along with the ip address of your uh, this ad and if AD. yeah and if you have multiple host multiple ldap host multiple uh, servers you have so you can provide the same the ip address and the their fqdn and so that your vault can resolve the address your machine understand the ip because and dns is not installed on the vault server so it's not able to re resolve the address so that's why we need to make that entry okay sir adan that we should need open to port 636 from our yes yes yep. that's need to be open we'll open up from our port from ad or our from pwa from your vault vault 636 okay inbound outbound i think it's it will be automatically opened do we do in a manual yeah no sometimes what happens you need to create you need to in the dbbomb.ini you can just provide allow non firewall standard rule and ip address view of your ad and the port number and inbound outbound tcp you need to there is a syntax 
because I have seen those scenarios and when you are doing the LDAPS integration, automatically it gets open. But sometimes I have seen those scenarios, so you can just add a rule in the dbpalm.n and automatically it will create a, a rule on the vault server. Okay, moving to next. How to update a new license without restarting the private arc service? If you want to update a new EPV license. But then you should log into private arc. Yes, yes, go ahead. For that, we should uh, log in into pri private our client using administrator account and we should open system safe and that from we should upload our uh, new certificate and we should take a backup of our of that old certificate okay. and we will do if we do we, we, we don't want to restart our uh, private our service. yes absolutely correct and let's suppose if your uh, current license is expired then how you will change the uh, license we just need to rename i mean from the old from the old one to the new one so how you will where you will rename this and because your uh, license is expired then you won't be able to log into private arc uh, client yeah exactly before we go ahead uh, find the license uh, file just rename uh, the old one by date wise and replace the from a new one where where and where you will replace so they should from conf from conf yes. folder in private account sorry sir in private in private account so vault server is conf folder under license xml yes correct there there is you have license oh, where okay. your dbpalm.in is there in the same you have a license.xml file so that's why there are two ways to update the license. So it was starting a service. And for that, if you will replace the license, a name should be license only, license.xml. And you just need to restart your private arc server service. And this is why we have two, because let's support your life current license is expired. So in that case, you won't be able to log into private arc line. That's why we have this option. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay, uh, I think there these were the only the questions, 10 questions. Okay, let me just, let's, uh, if you have any doubt, let's discuss that, guys. Hello? Sir, can you ask a uh, scenario based question of troubleshooting? So, how different uh, from uh, normal user, target user accounts uh, to the service accounts? So, service account is generally when your additional, like a uh, service is running with that. Uh, extra job is running. Uh, let's suppose you have an account, you have created an account. Uh, can you go and mute uh, some background noise is coming from your side? So when you want, uh, let's suppose you have created one account and you have onboarded in CyberArk and there is a service you want to run with this. So you can associate with it so that you can consider it as a service account. A service is running with, uh, with an account, username and password. And where your non normal account, you are just onboarding the account and no uh, nothing is running or you can say the uh, in cyber Act we have usages windows usages service okay. usages those are considered as a service so how, so how to check with the dependencies so you can go to the tab uh, you can just uh, go to the account details and right side you will see the usages whether you they the any service or the windows registry com plus application anything is running or not Sir, can we do it? Can we do it okay. account level with scheduled task? Scheduled task? Yes, you can. Uh, using the there is a scheduled task uh, usages is there. You can associate. 
Sir, actually, if we, if we select object level access control for a safe, mm -hmm. for suppose the uh, A user is added to that safe and he gave full permissions to that user. Yes. Sir, we can remove that permission from account level. No, no. That means if, uh, that user gets only that one account in that uh, in that safe. Yep. So no, he can't access the other account and he couldn't see that other account in that safe. Uh, if you are enabling the object level access control or OLAC, so there is more granular permission you have. One is the use and retrieve. Let's suppose if the, there are two users having all the permission. So when you will go to the account details, you will see the use and retrieve. So for one user, you can uh, uncheck. So more granular permission you can give using the OLAC. But it's, uh, you cannot reverse it back. If you have enabled it, uh, OLEC, you cannot reverse back. That's your OLEC. So we can't reverse permissions or you can't reverse, any subject? You subject? can't uncheck that permission. Like you have enabled it, you can, can cannot disable it. We can add users to that uh, safe, but we can't uh, uncheck that permission. Yes, yes. Can we do it at account level, sir? Actually, one interviewer asked this question. Account so, level mean to you mean to say? At the right side, right permissions options is there. At scheduled task, task, the window service permissions. Scheduled task. Scheduled task is a usage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir usage. Sir. Yep. So that is uh, that is point. added to your platform. If you will add it the platform, you can see the uh, usages added. Edit that platform, uh, expand your UI and workflows. And there you can see the usages, what uses are being added to that platform. Uh, one real time scenario where, uh, see, once we receive an inventory for regarding like service accounts onboarding, so what all permissions are required and what is the further process to onboard? Service account, you need to have the, uh, in safe, you need to have the permission. In which safe you are adding? So add account permission you should have on that safe. And you can uh, on add account number of accounts in that safe. And if you are part of the Vault Admins group and while creating a new safe, if you are added uh, Vault Admins, by default, it's a best practice. Vault Admins group uh, has, has must be given all the permission on all the safes. So if you are the Vault Admin group, you can just uh, onboard any account in CyberArk. If, if you are not given a vault admin group or if you're not added into them. So as I said, you can give the, we can give the permission. You can just go to the uh, safe and you can add member and then you can just uh, from AD also and, uh, or if it's a vault user. So you can just search for that, uh, for that user and you can uh, grant the permission so that he'll get the permission to. No, in this scenario, the client is not interested to share you as an admin rights. So yeah, so it's then, fine, it's fine, uh, because uh, the admin right means you have four groups, vault admin group and your uh, auditor group, safe manager and your uh, user group. User yes. groups, so yeah. So you just add that uh, user to the users group in the AD and he will have only the, uh, he, he will only be seeing that account view in the, when he will log into PWA okay. and just grant him the permission on, on, on those safes where he want to onboard the account, that's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, that that's uh, one part. But uh, what is the part like? Once you have an, an inventory, uh, do you? I mean, what is the step by step like? Uh, like let's say in uh, end users where we create uh, first uh, save, then uh, we select the platform and all yes. right. So that's how we go step by step process. Yes. And when uh, we add the account properties and all, and then we add uh, add account. Yeah, it's the same, the normal onboarding. You give the account name and the address and the password if it's provided, or you can onboard the without password also. And you need to select whether okay. it's a Windows, Linux, or which type of account it is. And uh, how is it complicated for the password rotations uh, for this uh, application accounts or like the service accounts? Uh, no, it's not that much. And uh, because CyberArk does support lots of uh, plugins out of the box. Yes, for the web mm -hmm. application, you but you can uh, develop it if you uh, customize because CyberArk also support the customization. So it does also provide you the customization using the like uh, your you have the plugin generated utility or if you have worked on the this uh, 
inspect activity if you are want to develop a connector mm-hmm. for a web address let's suppose you have facebook.com you want to develop a connector mm-hmm. for the username and password yes using the uh, it's just like uh, the web form settings you need to just uh, uh, record the workflow the username and the password how it is able to log in so same you need to put in the web form settings and for cpm you need to create a cpm.ini file and you need to provide the target username and the password and all and then using the ca net invoker plugin you can just rotate the password also okay is the session recorded or like how yeah is it? session is getting recorded i'll be uh, uploading this session on youtube also on on oh, sunday great. Thank on you. sunday i'll be uploading this right i have one question uh, so suppose if, if a account is set to exclusive and we want to you know release that account without allowing one time password mm-hmm. so what what is that parameter we can change there is a minimum validity parameter in your platform and by mm-hmm. default it's 60 minutes so once uh, it is uh, it is uh, expired your cpm will automatically rotate the password and it will release the account Sir, don't mind. I am asking this uh, doubt again. Yes. Sir, in this Sir, in safe, there are uh, thousand accounts, but I am the, I am the user. I should, I should uh, able to see only one account in that safe. Can we, Can we give that permission like that, sir, to any user? No. To see that only no, one account. You cannot give that. For that, you can create a new safe, and you can put that account in that safe, and grant the access to that that safe only where you have one account. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No problem. <laughs> okay. More question, guys. Now, when you are starting a new batch. Uh, maybe from next. Uh, month. Okay. Okay. And uh, the fee structure is going to be eight k for that. Is it that? Is that I'm right? Uh, no, no. It's uh, that is for the self paced. Okay. Okay. Self paced course, and which is already there on the uh, website. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Yeah, I'm dropping. Okay. No yeah. Uh, have, a have a great evening to everyone. You too. So, uh, others having more questions, or we can just wind up this session. And also, I'll be uploading this uh, video on YouTube. You can just uh, on this Sunday itself. Sir, can you tell about some uh, subject in upgrade? sorry the application of uh, components and vault server which type of questions will ask from interview uh, in interview as i said there can be multiple questions and question can I mean, question the, can be create less let's suppose you are answering something so question can be created out of it also for that i would say uh, please <laughs> don't skip the basic part for let's start with the basic thing and then you can just uh, because if you're there let let's suppose you uh, somehow you cleared the interview after getting the job they they'll just provide you they'll start assigning you the task they will not teach you cyber arc because uh, training is not given in the industry and they will uh, expect like yeah you can just uh, work on this or they will assign you some project and you need to work on it so if you don't have any idea about cyber arc how you are going to work 
sir i am saying an upgradation of call server i am not aware, am not aware of that upgradation but in job description there is an upgradation of so simply component. simply you can say like uh, i don't have overview because in the upgradation there are lots of thing in upgradation uh, important thing is the planning because in the upgrade uh, you need to plan it so there is a zero data loss upgrade is also there and how you plan it because let's suppose you have your 10 10 uh, servers your dr vault your production vault and you're including your psm cpm so you need to uh, for 5 days or how long for you need to just uh, create a plan and then like you need to go step by step and there are many things you need to disable the cpm throughout you need you can have data freeze throughout raising the change management notifying every uh, towers about the upgrade and all and upgrade is very simple it's not like you just need to copy the set of file let's suppose you are upgrading the vault copy the latest set of file on the vault server stop all the services check the your um, what we say the basic prerequisites let's suppose if you are upgrading 12.6 and there might have been some new prerequisites you need to have so those prerequisites you can install on the vault server and just run the setup it will ask you whether you want to modify your database or want to upgrade click on yes and next 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 i think four or five steps your vault will be upgraded and similarly you can upgrade your dr vault but the main thing is if the version of your vaults are different you cannot replicate the data between them and you need to route the traffic when you are upgrading your dr vault your your traffic is going from the production but when you are uh, upgrade when you will upgrade your production your traffic should go from the dr so you need to test everything uh, on and we we just follow one thing we don't upgrade both the vault on a single day let's suppose because after upgrading uh, you got some error and it's taking time to resolve that so in that case what we have we have other vault and users will be uh, like connecting to that vault only in that case no no user is impacted uh, yes go ahead hello Sir, if a user is uh, if if an user session is working fine yesterday, but session is not working today, and all other things are working fine, but what may be the issue and how to resolve? Please, I mean, please, user session is working worked yesterday fine. So all things are fine, but he is not able to open the session today. Maybe you need to check the logs. Uh, your PSM connect or admin connect password is out of sync. PSM app user is out of sync, or your PSM service is not running. Or in in most of the organization, what they have, they open the port for one year or two year, two two year. They have some policy. If that's the case, you check the port also. If the ports are opened or not. So there can be multiple reasons. So always uh, check the logs. Then only you will be able to get it. What's the issue? Can you discuss the logs also, which uh, we will check in this situation? So, if you will, uh, the best to check is when you will uh, uh, go to the activities, go to account details. There is an activities option. In there itself, you will get the uh, error message. What's the error? Internal code something, or the incorrect username or password or something, or uh, your saved credentials are not allowed on the target server. Privilege session manager is not running. Something like that, you will get there itself. Okay. uh do we have more questions guys or we can just wind up me uh, uh can you please discuss about the shadow user also so every time a session is established so there is a new uh, shadow user created for each user yep and it's created only once it will not be like when like, let's suppose you logged in for the first time 
so your shadow user will be created on the psm server so every time if you will connect again the same user will be used to log in not a different shadow user will be created only one shadow user gets created for every user and for your rdp like when you are connecting to a windows server so your shadow user will not be created for your ssh or you are connecting to some uh, web based or some uh, thick client connectors th then your shadow user gets created but in the newer version you will not see a shadow user gets created for a windows session also so shadow user is just like uh, which is used to uh, establish the transparent connection to the target server with the least privilege okay so it's not for windows yep okay for non rdp uh, client only your shadow user will be created Uh, steps, steps of perform backup utility activity backup utility is like provided by cyberarc and you can install on any of the component server especially it is installed on the cpm server so it's the i think three or four steps it will be installed and there you can just provide the vault there is a vault.ini file you can provide the ip address of your production vault and you can create a user.ini file generally a backup user is used to uh, run the backup from your production to the backup server so you need to create a cred file and you can just schedule also there is a task scheduler uh, provided by microsoft so you can schedule the task also on daily basis incremental backup will be running and on weekly you can run the full backup full incremental backup and there are different commands to run pa replicate and vault.ini log on from file and user.ini something and for your full backup you just need to add to the same command you need to add full backup thank you okay so what is the difference between vulnerability and patching system like query question patching or like vulnerability means let's suppose um, cyberarc has released or microsoft has released some vulnerability you need to uh, apply a kb update something you need to apply to the server and that's critical so the same thing it's the patching means it's not the uh, our, there are two things let let's suppose in cyberarc in pwa there is an option you need to make that option disable you need to disable it because due to that option something is leaking out your information so that can also be considered as a vulnerability but the most of the vulnerability means you need to either you need to upgrade to the upgrade the version or it or it will be os level you need to apply the patch apply the patch means you need to install a kb update is there released by microsoft for a, for the windows server time to time so you need to install on that server and just patch your server okay, so okay guys so let's sir are you, are you uploading the topic wise uh, sessions in sunday Or you are uploading only this video in Sunday. I cannot upload the practical videos now due to the copyright okay. issue. So yeah. I can just upload this session only. So I'll be uploading this session on this coming Sunday at five or seven p.m. Thank you so much. Okay. So thank. Me, can you also tell about the bind user once? What is the role of bind user? bind user like you need to create on the ad and this but this is used uh, while doing the ldap pass integration and this user should have only read only permission and so that it can query the ad and just see if that account exists or not let's suppose you log in to pwa so how that authentication is done or how your vault is uh, knowing about this user exist on the ad so bind user is used to bind your ad and the vault server so that uh, 
it can query the AD and can find out whether this user exists or not on the AD. Okay, I believe everyone dropped off. Sir, yep. Sir, last question. Sir, last question. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, sir, can five users manage, uh, manage uh, one privilege account at a time? Sorry? I mean, five users can manage a single privilege account at a time. I mean, they are using with connect button. Yeah, so they can manage, like that. manage means a different thing. You are saying, you mean to say connecting to target server. Yes, they can connect. I believe. How we know, uh, how we know uh, Yes, go ahead. How we know that where was some information leaked? For suppose, for suppose there was an information leak from any one of user. How we know that? Sir? Leaked, leaked, videos, leaked uh, means? Leaked means some data has been accepted or some data has leaked. If from CyberArk, you cannot leak that data, something like that, because everything is corrupted. Sir, like and that, uh, if, uh, you mean to say if they have made some changes on that server? Yeah, change. yeah changes yeah, on the yeah. server like changing the password yes, yes. so you can see the video recordings you can find out from the monitoring tab and you can see which user had done what which user had done those changes yeah okay, yeah, okay. so from your recordings only yes. we can find. and there's also if you are uh, if you have integrated with sim so you can create the use cases on your sim tool whether you are if you are using splunk or QRadar or different tool so on that tool, you can create the use cases because your vault will forward the logs to your uh, SIM tool. So there, yeah, there you can create the use cases. And if, suppose uh, if a user is using administrator, CyberArk administrator user, so uh, automatically a mail will be tri triggered to your manager or the lead. Yeah, this use, there was uh, this guy who used this account. So there are many use cases you can create on your Splunk also or any sim tool so that you can come to know yeah, which user has done uh, if someone has uh, someone did the password change on a server okay so and i'll try to conduct this session on every friday or twice uh, in a month so you can just prepare and we can have more social, more session just like I believe this will help you out to uh, appear in the, in the interview. But again, I always say in every session, please focus on the basic. Don't go with the interview part because if somehow you clear the interview at the last, you need you need to work on the on, on that cyber act project. In in that case, you will be in trouble because your manager lead will be start assigning you the task and all and they will come to know uh, you don't you don't have that much knowledge so work on the basic and then you can go with from for advanced and if your basics are strong you will not uh, uh, need you will not need uh, this interview question and all okay so uh, let's wind up this call, guys. And sir, sir, sir PSM, PSM sessions can't uh, generate video recordings, sir. They they can only generate uh, text form only, plain text form. Sorry, PSM can. Sir, so it can uh, generate video recordings or not, sir? While generate while uh, session was happening. Yeah. By using PSM. Your PSM is recording the session only. You are getting the video records, and also you are getting the keystroke logs. And your PSMP also, you will get the recording and keystroke logs. If you are connect, if you are using yeah. PSMP, we can get, we can get video log, video yeah. recorded from using, from using PSMP only. Yeah. Not the PSMP okay. only, both PSM and PSMP. Ah, um, so both and PSMP. Actually, one of my friends said PSMP can't generate video recorded. That was in the older version. Yeah. In the newer version, it's there for all. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, so thank you guys for joining and have a good day. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you. Bye.